सो हेलो एवरी वन वी आर गोइंग टू स्टार्ट विद द नेक्स्ट चैप्टर विच इज़ चैप्टर एट मल्टीप्लेक्सिंग फॉर द वीक फाइव और राइट सो लेट स्टार्ट विद दिस चैप्टर आई हैव डिवाइडेड माई दिस चैप्टर इंटू टू पार्ट सो इन द फर्स्ट पार्ट आई विल कवर फ्रीक्वेंसी डिविजन मल्टीप्लेक्स वॉट इज मल्टीप्लेक्सिंग फ्रीक्वेंसी डिविजन मल्टीप्लेक्सिंग एंड अ लिटिल बिट अबाउट टाइम डिविजन मल्टीप्लेक्सिंग then in the next part we will talk about uh, in the next recorded lecture i will talk about more on time division multiplexing so let's start with this all right so what is actually multiplexing we know that the medium the channel the link is shared between the uh, various people or the various users so the process of taking the signals from the users and combining them into as one signal and then sending that one signal on the shared transmission medium is called as multiplexing so i repeat it again process of taking or combining the signals analog or digital from the various users and combining them into one signal and then sending that one signal combined one signal on the shared transmission medium is called as multiplexing the opposite of multi multiplexing is done by a device called multiplexer and the opposite of multiplexing is demultiplexing demultiplexing uh, what it does it takes the one signal and then separates uh, the number of uh, channels or the number of combined signals into the uh, respective one so the process of demultiplexing is uh, done by a device which is called as demultiplexer so multiplexer is always attached at the sender side and demultiplexer is uh, attached at the receiver side multiplexing the technique of multiplexing just in one words it is also called as many to one because it combines many signals and makes them as one signal demultiplexing is also called as one to many because it takes one signal as an input and then uh, gives out many outputs so let's read it multiplexing allows several transmission sources to share a larger transmission capacity we need multiplexing because we know that our transmission medium has a limited capacity there are many constraints on the transmission medium and uh, moreover the transmission medium is shared among the various users so we have multiple links on the one physical line a common application of multiplexing is in the long haul communication especially in the telephones trunks on the long haul communication are high capacity fiber coaxial so the type of transmission medium that we use for long haul communication they are uh, high capacity fiber optic cables coaxial cable or the mi microwave links now these links can carry large number of voice and data transmission at the same time using multiplexing and the common forms what are the different forms of multiplexing we have FDM which is called as frequency division multiplexing TDM is called as time division multiplexing WDM is called as wavelength division multiplexing STDM is called as statistical time division multiplexing so out of these more commonly we are going to explore FDM which is frequency division multiplexing time division multiplexing and we will talk about statistical time division also so let's start with this so let's start with the frequency division multiplexing all right before going ahead now uh, one more point that i will like to mention is uh, in the previous slide is now when we talk about multiplexing that means we are combining the signals uh, according to some parameters now frequency division multiplexing means a multiplexing is done based on the frequency of the signals so different signals may have different frequency uh, so they are multiplexed according to so that means uh, signals of dif different frequency carrying different frequency they are combined together that is called as frequency division multiplexing time division multiplexing is based on time in this case uh, a time slot is given to a uh, each user wavelength division multiplexing when the mul when the multiplexing of the signals is done based on the wavelength and the last one is statistical division multiplexing it is actually a form of the time division multiplexing uh, but it has some more parameters all right so uh, 
uh, going ahead now talking about the demultiplexer also so the multiplexer is connected by a single data link to the demultiplexer now what is the core of, uh, what is the use of the demultiplexer the link is uh, the this link is able to carry n separate chain channels of data the multiplexer combines combines means multiplexes the data from n input lines and transmits uh, over a high capacity data link now what does demultiplexer does a uh, demultiplexer will accept the combined or the multiplexed signals uh, and it separates or demultiplexes the data according to the channel and delivers the data to the appropriate receivers or to the appropriate uh, output lines uh why do we need multiplexing we need multiplexing because higher the data rate more cost effective the transmission facility is so for a given application and over a given distance the cost per kilobits per second declines with an increase in the data rate also most individual data communication devices they require relatively modest data support so for example many terminal and personal computer applications they do not involve web access or intensive graphics the data rate can be between uh, somewhere 90 9.6 kilobits per second to 64 kilobits per second all right so we are going to talk about uh, now the further techniques which is uh, frequency division multiplexing so let's talk about frequency division multiplexing the frequency division multiplexing is the most commonly or the heavily used and uh, it is actually familiar to anyone who ever has used a radio example is your fm radio which you normally use or listen to in your homes or while traveling in the cars and even in the television set the second is time division multiplexing it is also called as synchronous tdm so we are going to talk about these two techniques uh, uh, in detail in our this chapter so frequency division multiplexing as the name suggest the different input signals they are multiplexed or combined based on their frequency that means the different signals for example i have a sender 1 sender 2 sender 3 they have data to send but they their signals are having the different frequency so in this case frequency division multiplexing the signals having different frequency but the same wavelength and the same phase will be combined together that means the signals have a different frequency range now so frequency division multiplexing is possible when useful bandwidth of the transmission medium exceeds the required bandwidth of the signals to be uh, transmitted so in this case the signals are multiplexed according to the frequency so if you see over here i have a channel 1 uh, which sends the, the signals at uh, some frequency frequency x channel 2 is sending the frequent uh, signals at another frequency y channel 3 at another frequency so all these channels they are sending the signals of the data uh, at different frequencies so these can be combined together when these are combined together or the multiplexed together the, this the, the technique is called as the frequency division multiplexing so frequency division multiplexing can be used with the analog signals a number of signals are carried simultaneously on the same medium by allocating to each signal a different frequency band so most important point over here is that the signals are transmitted over the shared medium and each signal is given a different frequency band number of signals that can be carried simultaneously if each signal is modulated on a different carrier frequency and the carrier frequencies are sufficiently separated that the bandwidths of the signals do not significantly overlap so in this case number of signals can be many number of signals can be carried simultaneously and each signal has to be uh, given uh, and each signal has a different frequency and the carrier frequency are they are separated so we have two concepts over here one is the frequency of uh, one is the frequency of the signal of the user another is the carrier frequency so this signal will be carried by some other uh, signal so uh, this uh, the signal which carries our 
uh, signal from the user is called as the carrier frequency wave. So to see it as more precisely, FPM is possible when the useful bandwidth, as I said earlier, uh, of the transmission medium of the link exceeds the required bandwidth of the signals to be transmitted. A number of signals can be carried at the same time if each signal is modulated on a different carrier frequency and the carrier frequency they are separated from the bandwidth. So we are going to talk about uh, look into the frequency division multiplexing in the next slide. Alright so moving ahead. So this is an example of the uh, this is an example of the FDM process, how it, uh, how, it, uh, how it is done. So for example, in this case, I have a user 1, I have a user 2, I have a user 3 on the sender side. Now this is the frequency of the signal. This is the frequency of the signal and this is the frequency of the signal. So this, this signal will be uh, imposed on some carrier frequency wave. So something that will take because we need a carrier also. So it will be imposed on the carrier frequency one. Suppose it has a carrier frequency wave which has a frequency two and it has a frequency three. These are of different frequencies. So when these are combined together the resultant frequency for the user one is this, user two is this and the user 3 is this. So if you see over here, there are three different uh, signals from three different users having the different frequency. Now these are combined together and they form a wave something like this. At this point, this is called as multiplexing. Now if you see when these signals are combined together, this is called as multiplexing. So a multiplexer or a modulator, uh, multiplexer will be used on the sender side. Now at the receiver side, what we have at the receiver side, we have something opposite. We have the filters. We have the filters. Now what these filters will do, these will separate the, uh, uh, separate the different signals. Uh, these will separate the signals having different frequency. So we will have uh, this filter will uh, take this signal and separate out the signals having the different frequencies. So we have a uh, frequency for user 1, a signal for user 2 and signal for user 3. Now the next point over at the receiver end is to separate the carrier frequency and the user frequency. So to separate it we use a demodulator. So carrier frequency gets separate and user frequency gets separate. This is called as demultiplexing. So this process over here, when we use the filter to separate out the uh, signals having the different frequency, this is called as the demultiplexing. So this is the demultiplexing. So moving ahead, in the case of digital input, input signals must be passed through modems to be converted to the analog. It is used in TV cable, used in cell phones, used in radio broadcast. So more uh, precise uh, overview of the um, uh, FDM is given over here. So before we discuss this slide, uh, let's talk about some other important terms. Let me go back to this diagram, right? right. So in this diagram, what is shown over here, a general case uh, of multiplexing frequency division multiplexing is shown over here. So if you can see over here, there are six signal sources from six different uh, 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 from six different senders they are fed into the they are sent to the multiplexer and with uh, multiplexer modulates each signal on a different frequency uh, it can be any frequency frequency 1 frequency 2 and each modulated signal if you see each modulated signal over here uh, each modulated uh, signal requires a certain bandwidth centered on its own carrier frequency and that is referred to as a channel. So each signal that has been modulated, it requires its own bandwidth which is called as channel. And to prevent the interference, the channels are separated by the guard, guard bands which are unused portions of the spectrum. So if you see over here, between each channel, 
there is a dark black line so what is the purpose of this dark black line this dark black black line actually separates the channel 1 and channel 2 from being interfered from uh, interfering with each other so this dark black line between the two channels is called as the guard band this is a guard band now the purpose of this guard band is to prevent the interference of the frequencies of uh, two adjacent channels so for example this is a uh, this is a, a signal of frequency one it is sent using its own channel and it is sent using its own ch uh, channel two now channel one and channel two they are separated by some frequency that is called as guard band now this is the unused portion imagine a situation for example if this signal is sent now a second signal has to be sent if we don't have some separation between the two channels the signals will overlap with each other and imagine in the case of uh, fm radio which you normally listen in your car or at your homes if the if two stations are mixed together just imagine what uh, information or what voices you will be hearing so that's why the stations are separated by uh, a guard band and the guard band is the unused frequency uh, some frequencies given to this band but that is not used that is called as the unused frequency so to prevent interference the channels are separated by guard bands which are unused portions of the spectrum composite signal which can be transmitted across the medium it can be analog uh, it can be analog and the input signals can be either uh, digital or uh, uh, it can be either digital or analog so in case of digital input the input signals must be passed through modem to be converted to analog and in either case each input analog signal should be modulated to move it to the appropriate frequency band all right so next we move to the diagram that we were supposed to discuss over here all right so this diagram actually uh, shows the frequency division multiplexing uh, in a more uh, detailed over here <clears throat> so we have many number these m1 m2 mt what are these these are the signals so these are the analog or digital signals the, these can be the analog or the digital signals now these signals have certain frequency and these signals are to be multiplexed on to some transmission medium so each signal m1 m2 m3 uh, uh, each signal is modulated on to a carrier frequency fi so each signal will be uh, it it may have a carrier some carrier frequency f1 f2 f3 f4 so m1 is modulated using carrier frequency m1 m2 is modulated using sub carrier carrier frequency f2 and similarly f1 so uh, f3 fn or f3 why because multiple carriers are to be used and each is referred to as sub carrier so these are called as now sub carrier any type of modulation may be used so any type of modulation can be used any type we have different types of modulation techniques also so what is the resulting signal here what do we have the resulting signal the resulting analog modulated signal are then summed to produce the composite baseband signal so after this we will have some signal after this we will have some signal after this we will have some signal so these signals are added together to produce a summed up baseband signal so the signal that will be produced by combining all these modulated signals will be called as the uh, baseband signal now why it is called as the baseband signal because it is used to designate the band of frequency because this signal which we have now has a range of frequencies of the signal to be delivered by the source and used as a modulating signal so this signal actually consists of signals of many frequencies so this was the uh, this was a diagram at the transmitter side or at the uh, or at the sender side
okay now so what happens at the receiver side uh, we will talk over here again so the analog signals may be transmitted over the suitable media and at the receiving end the fdm signal is demodulated to receive uh, retrieve mbt and it is passed through n band pass filters each having a frequency fi now if you see over here this signal is passed through the transmission medium at the receiver side this st signal is received now this st signal is passed through the main receiver and it produces the signal mbt which was over here now this mbt signal is passed through the band pass filters having the different frequency so as to produce the signals with the carrier waves s1 t over here like this and then these signals along with their carrier waves they are passed through the demodulators and this after passing through the demodulators it will produce the signals having the different frequencies which is delivered to the uh, respective uh, receiver so they have the bandwidth the bi uh, it can be in the range of 1 to n so in this way the signal is again split up into component parts and each component is then demodulated to recover the original signal so here the original signal is recovered so this is how uh, demultiplexing happens at the uh, receiving side so moving ahead all right now let's talk about uh, guard bands do we need do we really need guard bands so in this figure there is no guard bands which may cause overlapping guard bands are actually used to prevent the overlapping of the signals so if we don't have uh, the guard bands the different signals will overlap each other and we will not be able to uh, have uh, like uh, we will not be able to get what is being there in the signal or we will not be able to uh, make it out of uh, uh, from the signal the make make the data correctly out of it so that's why we need the guard bands moving ahead now we are going to talk about how to calculate the bandwidth uh, of a uh, of a multiplex channel using the frequency uh, division multiplexing as we know going ahead now see over here for example this is uh, a frequency of uh, the first channel now this portion the in between this portion will be some unused portion but this portion will have frequency the purpose of this portion is to separate the uh, signals from the two uh, two sources so that they do not overlap with each other now how to calculate the bandwidth for the frequency division multiplexing because we have the voice channels and we have the guard bands also so let's have an example over here for example you are given five voice channels each with the 4 kilohertz bandwidth now let me draw over here so you are given five voice channels each with a 4 uh, kilohertz bandwidth so for example i have like this i have five voice channels this is the first voice channel this is the second voice channel this is the third voice channel this is the fourth voice channel and this is the fifth voice channel so i have five voice channel each with a 4 kilohertz bandwidth what is the bandwidth of this 4 kilohertz 4 kilohertz 4 kilohertz 4 kilohertz and 4 kilohertz now there is a need uh, we will uh, read it at the later there is a need for a guard band of 2 kilohertz between the channels so let me just name the channels this is channel 1 this is channel 2 this is channel 3 this is channel 4 and this is channel 5 so in between the channels we need to have a guard band all right so that means over here i should have a guard band okay okay so going back so in between the channels for example here i need to have a guard band that means 
and the frequency of the guard band is 2 kilohertz. That means it is 2 kilohertz in between channel 1 and 2. In between channel 2 and 3, I must have again a guard band and the frequency of this guard band is 2 kilohertz. Uh, in between channel 3 and 4, I must have a guard band and the frequency of this guard band is 2 kilohertz. In between channel 4 and 5, I must have a guard band and the frequency of uh, this guard band is 2 kilohertz. So now, how many channels, voice channels I have? I have 5 voice channels and number of guard bands I have 4, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4. So always remember that we will have the number of guard bands is one less than the number of voice channels given. So if you see over here, we have five voice channels, but number of guard bands we require is four. Now how to calculate the bandwidth here now? What is the question? We have to calculate the bandwidth over here. All right. So how to calculate the bandwidth? Uh, we will calculate the bandwidth. First of all, we have the 5 voice channels multiplied by what is their uh, bandwidth? Their bandwidth is 4 kilohertz. So, 5 channels multiplied by 4 kilohertz plus number of guard bands. We have 4 guard bands. I have 4 guard bands. And the frequency of each guard band is 2 kilohertz. So, 2K. When I calculate 5 into 4 is 20K, 20 kilohertz. And 4 into 2 is 8, 8 kilohertz. So, the total is 28 kilohertz. Now, when I say draw it, you need to draw like this. Uh, the way I have shown over here in the slides and you need to mention that this is the voice band and this is the guard band. So this is how you can draw it. Five voice channels each with three kilohertz bandwidth are to be multiplexed together. There is a need for a guard band of 1.5 kilohertz. So what is the bandwidth? So I have five voice channels. Let me draw over here. I have 5 voice channels, 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. I have 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. These are the voice channels. And what is their bandwidth? 3, 3, 3 kilohertz, 3 kilohertz and 3 kilohertz. There is a need for a guard band of 1.5 kilohertz. So, number of guard bands. I explained in the previous slides that number of guard bands will be one less than the number of voice channels. So, if I have five voice channels, I need four guard bands. So, this is the first guard band between channel 1 and 2, then between channel 2 and 3, then between channel 3 and 4, and then channel 4 and 5. And what is the bandwidth? It is 1.5, 1.5. 1.5 and 1.5. So, let's calculate. So, I have 5 voice channels. I have 5 voice channels and the bandwidth of each voice channel is 3 kilohertz, 3k plus I have 4 guard bands multiplied by uh, each of uh, it is having a frequency of 1.5k. So, 1.5k. When I uh, calculate it, I get 5 multiplied by 3 is 15k plus 4 multiplied by 1.5 is 6k, 6.0k. And hence the answer is 15 plus 6 is 21 kilohertz. So, the total bandwidth that is required for uh, this example is 21 kilohertz. Let's check if you see uh, the diagram is given over here and how to draw it you can check from here. Okay. Now, let's talk about analog signals hierarchy. 
So let's talk about analog signal hierarchy in this slide. Alright, analog signal hierarchy is used by AT&T. It's a long distance carrier system which is provided in the US and throughout the world to transmit the voice band channels over the high capacity transmission link. So the normal telephones that we use in our homes and the links that are used in the transmission are coaxial cables or the microwave systems. The earliest and still very common technique for utilizing high capacity links is frequency division multiplexing. So in the United States, AT&T has designed hierarchy for the frequency division multiplexing schemes to accommodate transmission of various capacities. Uh, so how does this hierarchy work? Uh, it has been designed into uh, different hierarchies. So at the first level of the hierarchy, this is the first level of the hierarchy. There are 12 voice channels and the, the, and the uh, bandwidth of each, each voice channel is 4 kilohertz. So these are 12 voice channels and uh, the bandwidth of each voice channel is uh, 4 kilohertz. So total uh, bandwidth is 48 kilohertz. Uh, and it is in the range of 60 to 108 uh, kilohertz. All right, uh, uh, in the end, it is in the increments of 4 kilohertz. And the next basic building block is the 60 channel supergroup. So we have the 60 channel supergroup. So there are 60 channels in this supergroup, which is formed by the frequency division multiplexing of 5 group signals. So at this group, each group is treated as uh, a single signal with the 48 kilohertz bandwidth and is modulated by a subcarrier. So the subcarriers may have the frequency between 420 to 612 uh, kilohertz and in the increments of 48 kilohertz. So what does this mean? That it means in the first in the first hierarchy we have only less number of voice channels. In the second hierarchy, there are 60 voice channels and the total bandwidth is 240 kilohertz. And in the third hierarchy, there are 600 voice channels and the total bandwidth is 2.52 megahertz. And in the last, uh, uh, and in the last group, uh, there are 3600 voice channels, 6 master groups and the bandwidth is 16.984 megahertz. So uh, this is uh, actually the hierarchy which is uh, offered by the AT&T. Now we will talk about that was all about the, uh, the frequency division multiplexing. So now we are going to talk about the time division multiplexing. So time division multiplexing it's a digital multiplexing technique. Frequency division multiplexing is an analog uh, multiplexing technique. So it's a uh, it's, it's a Digital multiplexing technique for combining several low rate channels into a high rate channel at a specific time. So what happens in the time division, in, in the frequency division multiplexing, uh, the channels are multiplexed, uh, the channels that are multiplexed have different frequencies. But here in the time division multiplexing, the channels that are multiplexed, uh, they have like, they are allocated different time. So it's a quite different uh, type of multiplexing technique. We have synchronous division multiplexing also, but uh, we will talk about it later. So let's understand the basic idea uh, regarding the time division multiplexing. Now in the time division multiplexing, suppose we have n users and they are connected to uh, and they are connected to the uh, receivers by the single transmission medium. Now this transmission medium has to be shared among all these uh, senders. So what happens is uh, this medium is shared among the users not according to the frequency but according to the time. So how it is shared according to the time? So for example, the user 1 will be allocated time so to send it frame. Suppose it has one frame to send, it sends the one frame. Then after this, user 2nd will be given the time, user 2nd send its frame, then user 3rd send its frame and then user 4th send its frame. Then again, uh, it will be this process will be repeated unless all the data uh, of the all the users have been sent. So now, user one will send again, then user two, then user three, and user four. And then again, user one turns come again, then user two, user three, and user four. 
so this is how the time division multiplexing is followed so in time division multiplexing each user is given a time to use the shared transmission medium so as to send the data instead of using the frequency now at demultiplexing when this is received so suppose for example this is frame 1 when this frame is received this will be a first frame this will be combined as one this will be a second uh, frame or we can say group and this will be the third group so when this first group is received this demultiplex will separate out so it will send this first frame to the first receiver second frame to the second receiver third frame to the third receiver and fourth frame to the fourth receiver this is actually uh, you can say a um, efficient multiplexing technique which is used in the modern day industry today and we will uh, explore more about it so time division multiplexing so if you see over here uh, 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 time division uh, multiplexing is depicted over here uh, in this figure uh so multiple digital signals or even the analog signals they can be carried into the same transmission path by interleaving portion of each signal in time so uh inter the the signals are interleaved uh the interleaving can be at the bit level or in the blocks or bytes for the larger quantities so for example suppose there are six channels so channel 1 is given the time channel 2 channel 3 4 5 6 and then so on this process carries on now we talk about synchronous time division multiplexing uh, it's a it's a, a type of time division multiplexing so synchronous time division multiplexing can be used with digital signals or with the analog signals which carry the digital data so in this form of multiplexing data from the various sources can be carried in the repetitive frames this is what i showed so repetition of frames is there each frame consists of a set of time slots and each source is assigned one or more time slots per frame so each source is given a time slot synchronous tdm it is called as synchronous not because of synchronous transmission but because the time slots are pre assigned to the sources and it is fixed so each user has a fixed and a pre time uh, uh, time slot that's why it is called as synchronous now the time slots for each source are transmitted whether or not the source has data to send so for example if i go back if i go back in this previous example suppose at this point at this point user 2 does not have any data to send so what will happen still this time will be assigned to the user 2 even though the user two does not have any data to send this is called as synchronous time division multiplexing so this is used in t1 isdn sonic and sdh synchronous time division is possible when the achievable data rate uh, of the medium exceeds the data rate of the digital signals to be transmitted and in this case multiple digital signals can be carried on a single transmission path by interleaving the portions of each signal in time uh Uh, and a single line with a capacity of at least 6 mbps can accommodate the six sources so this is a quite new technique all right so if you see over here in the syn synchronous time division multiplexing if i explain over here suppose there are three users a b and c uh, a has three frames to send b has three frames to send and c has three frames to send so data will be taken from each of the user at every uh, time inter interval so when time t is equals to 1 a will send its first frame when time t is equals to 2 b will send the first frame when time t is equals to 3 c will send the first frame so uh, this will make a group a common group carrying the first data or the first packet from each user then when time t is equals to 4 a will send its second pa second uh, packet time t is equals to 5 b will send and then time t is equals to 6 c will send so this will make the second group when time t is equals to 7 a will send its third frame uh time t is equals to 8 b will send its third frame and time t is equals to 9 uh, c will send its third frame so this will make the third group each frame is three time slots and each time slot duration is 
t by 3 seconds. So this is an example of the synchronous TDN system overview. Let's understand it. How does uh, it happens? So let's understand this diagram. Now this is a depiction of the synchronous uh, uh, time division multiplexing. Now this upper part shows the how the data is sent from the trans from the sender side and uh, the lower part shows how the data is received as receiver side and this talks about the frame it may be empty or it may be occupied about the TDM frames. Alright, so let's first of all start with the transmission part and then we will discuss with the receiver part. So a number of signals, signal means number of sources uh, are to be multiplexed on the same transmission medium. So the basic idea whether it's frequency division multiplexing, wavelength division multiplexing or any kind of multiplexing, the basic idea is the same that we need to combine the signals from different resources. So a, diff, a number of signals, so suppose uh, user, N, uh, uh, user first user the signal is M1, M2 and M3. So these are multiplexed onto the same transmission medium. The signals carry digital data and are generally digital signals. Normally in case of time division multiplexing, the signals that are generated are digital signals. The incoming data from each source are briefly buffered. So whatever the data the user uh, is sending, it is buffered. Now what is a buffer? Buffer is a temporary memory location for storing the data temporary. So it's a temporary memory location for storing the user's data. Uh, the buffers are scanned sequentially to form a composite signal, uh, composite digital data stream. Now, when these signals are saved in the buffer, now these are scanned. Uh, these are scanned and they are then combined to form a digital data stream which is called as the combined signals from each of the resources. So the scan operation is sufficiently so rapid that each buffer is emptied before more data can arrive. This scanning operation is quickly within a blink of the eye. So thus the data rate of uh, the combined signal stream must be at least equal to the sum of the data rates of the MIT. That means the combination of these signals. So the digital signals that we have scanned and combined may be transmitted directly through a modem so that analog signal is transmitted and in either case trans transmission is typically synchronous. So now this combined signal is passed through the modem. So this was all about the sender side. So the transmitted data may have a format something like over here. When this data is transmitted, this transmitted data will be in the form of frames like this shown over here. So the data is organized into frames and each frame contains a cycle of time slots. And in each frame, one or more slots is dedicated to each data source. So each user or each data source has a time slot dedicated for it. The sequence of slots dedicated to one source from uh, frame to frame is called as the channel. And the slot length equals to the transmitter bu buffer length. Uh, typically, it is in the size of the bytes. Uh, so it is in the size of the bytes. So the bit interleaving technique is used. What is bit interleaving? That means first bit from source 1, first bit from source 2, first bit from source 3. Then second bit from source 1, second bit from source 2, second bit from source 3 and so on. This is called as the bit interleaving technique. So bit interleaving technique is used for making out the frames. Now what happens at the receiver end? At the receiver end, this uh, modulated uh, time division multiplexed uh, stream is uh, received. So it is demultiplexed and routed to the appropriate uh, destination buffer. So it is passed through the, uh, it is demultiplexed. Uh, for each input uh, source, uh, there is identical output destination that will receive the output data at the same rate. So at the receiver end, the opposite operation is formed. This signal is received sent to the modem, it will result in the combined data stream and then it will result, uh, it will do the scanning of this combined data stream and generate the individual uh, signals, send it to their respective buffers and then the individual signals will be, uh, uh, individual signals will be retrieved and then sent to the sender. So synchronous TDM is called synchronous not because synchronous transmission is used because 
time slots are pre-designed to the sources. So the time slots for each source are transmitted uh, whether or not the source has data to send. So each source will have a time whether or not the source has a data to send. So more on time, uh, uh, summing up the time division multiplexing, it's a digital multiplexing technique to combine the data. It has a medium data rate, signal data rate. Uh, multiple digital signals are interleaved in time. Interleaved means first of all first bit from A, B and C. Then from A, B and C. So this is how interleaving uh, principle works. Time slots are pre-assigned to the source and fixed. And time slots are assigned to the sources even if the sources they do not have the data to send. Do not have to be evenly distributed among the sources. So just a conceptual view of uh, a TDM. So in the time division multiplexing, we have uh, uh, we, we need to multiplex the signals based on time. So we, we will uh, do the interleaving of the bits. So first we take the bit one from user one, then bit one from user two, and then bit one from user three. We make a group out of it. Then we do the same thing, then we do the same thing. So when it is sent at the receiver side, these are multiplexed. Bit 1 is sent to the receiver 1, bit 2 is sent to the receiver 2 and bit 3 is sent to the uh, receiver 3. So uh, this is all about for uh, this lecture and uh, uh, more on time division uh, multiplexing we will discuss in the part 2 of this lecture. So thank you so much.